Hello, wonderful person, and welcome to What the Math. This is Anton, and today we're talking about Superman. That's right, Superman. We're going to try to recreate the home planet, or at least the home star system, of uh, Kal-El. Superman uh, from, obviously, Superman comics, Superman the movie, and the most recent uh, release of Super or Batman vs. Superman. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because, well, first of all, I like to recreate various uh, fictional universes, fictional galaxies, and fictional solar systems using this awesome video game, but also because I obviously have just watched uh, Batman vs. Superman and uh, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I figured, you know what, why not? Why not recreate something like that? Because I'm sure it will be fun. So let's actually start with the idea of where is his home system located in comparison to our sun. So this is our sun, this is our earth, and uh, this is where things get a little bit tricky. First of all, in DC Comics, there is quite a lot of various uh, multiverses, each of which is actually quite different. And here I'm talking about various continuities that DC Comics seem to have. And so, for example, in one continuity, you might have Superman that's uh, originally from the star that is relatively close to our Earth, uh, specifically the closest one I think was about 27 light years away. And uh, then we have a continuity where Superman is from another galaxy, specifically from Andromeda galaxy, that is uh, more than 2 million light years away. And uh, so this is where things get a little bit tricky. But what we're going to do is we're going to do this scientifically. And uh, there's actually one of the comic books that even did that scientifically. They um, kind of unofficially invited Neil uh, uh, deGrasse Tyson to identify uh, Krypton, uh, the uh, star and the planet where Superman is from, and to try to find a realistic enough star somewhere around our solar system so that they could actually sort of unofficially assign it as the... Uh, solar system where Superman is from. Now, this is kind of interesting because uh, he actually did find one that sort of fits the profile. Now, let's see if we can find it here. So let's go into the nearest 100 star simulation here and see if we can find it. All right, so here we go. Let's actually see if it's here. Now, the name for this star is this. It's, uh, it has two names. It, it's known as LHS 20, uh, 2520 or Glias 3707. So it's the same sort of a star uh, and I don't really see it here. I don't think this is close enough. Or I, I meant to say, I don't think this is far enough. So the Glias 3707 is not in this vicinity. Because the only Glias I see is here and right here. All right, so that's not going to work. So it looks like that particular star is somewhere farther away. And what's really interesting is that this star actually is about 42 light years away from the sun. So let's actually place it here. Let's, let's try to make our own Glias um, 3707. And just a spoiler alert, but um, I've already looked it up. It doesn't actually exist in the game. So even though I tried to look for it now, I, I, I was pretty sure I would not have found it because it doesn't exist. We need to make our own. And what we know about this star is that its spectral type is very similar to this star right here called EV Lacerta. It's M3.5. And uh, so we're going to place this star at a distance of about uh, 42 light years away from our sun. And here we go. This is the star where Superman is from. The name of the star is Rao. And uh, it is essentially uh, in real life known as... Glias 3707. It's a red dwarf and it's a pretty interesting looking star. Um, so why does it have to be a red dwarf? Why did it have to be a red dwarf? If you read the comics or if you know anything about the Superman's uh, superpowers, his superpowers are with him because apparently our sun, so basically the sun that we have, has a different color and different energy that it emits and this energy is absorbed by Superman's body and gives him superpowers. And this is actually one of the explanations for Superman powers, but there's there's a, quite a few different ones that sort of try to explain it differently. But we're going to stick with that because this has to be a red dwarf. All right, so that's step number one. And step number two is obviously we need to create a solar system here. Now, we know that this particular star has seven planets, but the only thing is that 
not only are the names of planets always different in different um, continuities within the comics, but also we don't actually know the names of the first few uh, planets. As a matter of fact, I don't think any comics even mention them. If you do know uh, the names, of, if you've read a comic book that I may have not seen that has the names of the first few uh, planets, please post them in the comments below so we can actually add them to one of the future revisions of this video. All right, so let's make, uh, well, let's just start with the most important planet first, and that's, of course, Krypton. I'm going to actually enable habitable zone so I can see where I'm placing it. And let's place a random rocky star right in the middle, right here. So this is going to be Krypton because we know that Krypton is actually... Uh, oh, this is not looking good. It's all, all gray and kind of ugly. Let's make it prettier. I'm going to make it pretty. Um, so yeah, we know that Krypton is a habitable planet and this is where Superman's whole family is from. Not just his family, but his whole species is from here. Alright, so this looks a little bit better once I've added atmosphere to it. It sort of transformed into this somewhat more beautiful looking planet. And so this here is going to be the planet of Krypton. This is where Superman is from. It is in the habitable zone of Rao, the home planet um, that is essentially 42 light years away from our sun. And we also know that this is the fourth planet from the star, so there has to be three more planets in between this, uh, but we, or at least I, don't actually know their names, so we're going to have to randomly generate them. And we're going to kind of make an assumption that they're relatively equidistant from each other, and the first planet here is called Taxianask. Second planet is Mnostest, and the third planet is Manax. Uh, so all three of these are just going to stay here for now until we can change their names in the future. Now, we do know some other things about Krypton. We know that it has moons, but the thing is, these moons also differ depending on the continuity in the story. So, in some continuities, there is a moon called Agaron, and that's the moon right here. And uh, this moon is basically known for being very hostile to, uh, to other species, and the only thing that we know that exists on it is essentially um, some sort of a plant. There's actually some vegetation on it, and this actually appeared in one of the comics in the past, but it really hasn't appeared since. We also know about the moon called Wackthorn, and this moon uh, appeared in several continuities, and in every single continuity, every time uh, this moon appears, it actually has been destroyed by a person by the name of Jax Orr. So this moon is actually destroyed, so we're going to turn it into an explosion. Let's see how this goes, and boom, there we go. Uh, okay then, nothing happened. It created a bunch of fragments, I think, but that's it. Well, that's not good. I expected a more explosive uh, event. Anyway, so it's gone now. It's destroyed. And for some reason, it also turned into just a plain white ball. I guess that's what happens when you destroy moons from now on. Anyway, moving on. Another moon that uh, Krypton has is called Koron, and Koron is known as a, the largest moon of uh, Krypton, but in some continuities this uh, also has been destroyed by the same person, so it may have actually been uh, eliminated instead of the other moon. So depending on the continuity you're reading or depending on the multiverse you're exploring, this might not even be here anymore. In another multiverse, there's a moon called Xenon, and this moon um, actually was sort of lost. Um, as soon as Krypton was destroyed, this moon survived and was launched into the outer solar system and basically escaped the destruction. So we're not sure what happened to this afterwards, but it was basically uh, gone. It sort of disappeared. And another moon I'm going to mention, actually the last moon I'm going to mention, is Argo, and this is from the Supergirl Cosmic Adventures uh, comics, and here... This is apparently a moon where a bunch of Kryptonians uh, decided to settle as well. But unfortunately, this moon is not mentioned in any other comic books, so we don't really know if it's still there or what actually happened to it after the destruction of Krypton. All right, let's make more planets, and we have planet number five here, and planet number five is also in the habitable zone, and the name for this planet is... Daron. Now, Daron is another habit, uh, habitable planet in the system, and here it actually has a humanoid race n named uh, Daronians living on it. So it's kind of similar to Mars, I guess, in a sense, but we don't really know what it looks like. All we know is that it's basically very similar to Krypton in almost every respect, and that it has another race living on it. And then we also know that there's another habitable planet called Thoron. And Thoron, uh, or Thoronians, are essentially very similar to Kryptonians as well. Uh, and this is a planet that appears in one of the comic books, but actually doesn't appear ever again. So uh, we're not sure if, we, if they were just eliminated with the Kryptonians, or if they survived the destruction of the solar system. 
But all we know is that they are similar to Kryptonians in uh, almost every way, and so obviously they would have very similar special abilities as well. Okay, so that's six planets so far. We're missing one more. We're going to place one on the outskirts here. It's a planet called Entus. We're not really sure about the names of the other planets. As I mentioned, they're not really mentioned anywhere else um, in any of the storylines or any of the comic books. Uh, so I'm just going to improvise and randomly generate these names. And so essentially, this is what the Superman's uh, solar system would look like if it was relatively close to our home planet Earth. And if you want to find Earth, it's right there. It's about 42 light years away from us. So I'm going to zoom out and show you how far away this actually is. Let's enable uh, the rings here. And there we go. That's our sun. And this is Rao, also known as Glias 3707. Uh, so it doesn't look very far, but it's actually pretty far it is pretty far and what i'm gonna do now is this we know that krypton gets destroyed we know that krypton essentially uh, is the reason why superman arrives to earth because his parents decide to save him by placing him in a capsule and he's given birth on earth uh, and he is technically the last kryptonian left now i'm not going to be going through everything that happened to krypton in this particular video uh, all we know is that it got destroyed that uh, things heated up inside its core and uh, basically the planet reached unstable state uh, eliminated everything in the vicinity and then created kryptonite so this is essentially how kryptonite was born now all of this we might cover in some of the future videos but in this video we're actually going to try to destroy the solar system and as you can see my krypton is already overheating that's probably because it i think it uh, some of the, its moons actually landed here unfortunately but this is pretty realistic so the krypton is overheating it's about to explode and we're actually going to initiate a supernova inside uh the star here by changing the mass of the star to let's just say i don't know 10 10 masses of sun boom there we go here comes the supernova so everything inside the Rao system is now gone just like it was in reality superman is hopefully on the way to uh earth and hopefully got saved by uh his parents that were unfortunately eliminated as well and look at that all of the planets are super heated now every single one of these planets that i made is super super hot and in the center we have a nova remnant it should technically be there we go it's actually a neutron star although um technically uh, this star named as glia 3707 when it actually uh destroys itself when it actually uh has a little bit of a nova not supernova but just a regular nova it's going to turn into white dwarf it will not actually have a supernova like we have it uh one here but let's actually advance time a little bit because i want to see if um if this ever makes it to uh, our planet, we're going to go back to our sun and let's place planet Earth in the middle. And so here's Earth and we're just going to kind of wait for for this to get to us or see what happens when it gets to us. I actually have a feeling some of the other stars might also uh, create supernova, but uh, it, look at that. Is it something blinking in there? Is that a pulsar? I think I may actually have created a pulsar. That's pretty awesome. Didn't actually expect that. Um, all right, so it's definitely coming toward us, and we might end up uh, dying, unfortunately, because I think, I think it's definitely going to get to this Earth that I've just created and consume it as well. So Superman, you didn't choose the right place to relocate, unfortunately. Uh, but luckily, this is already way in the future. We're actually like two hundred something, three hundred years in the future. So by this time. You know, you'll probably find a new place to, to call home. And so here we go. Supernova has actually arrived into our solar system as well. And will probably now consume our Earth as well. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this particular video. I just wanted to recreate Rao system, show you where it technically is located according to Neil deGrasse Tyson, and also give you an idea of what kind of planets there might have been located around Rao and uh, where Krypton was located as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this little video and hopefully you will leave a comment if you know something else about Superman uh, story or Superman planets or other Superman stuff that I haven't mentioned in this video. Please post it in the comments below. Also, check out some of the other videos I've posted. Uh, subscribe if you still haven't. Like this video if you enjoyed watching it and share it with your friends if you think they might enjoy learning more about Superman comics or just generally want to watch something about space and stuff. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Game you later. And as always... Bye-bye.